Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Military airplanes with outstanding capabilities have played unforgettable roles in U.S. military campaigns of the modern era. When President Lyndon B. Johnson gave the order in 1966 for the massive airlifting of troops to Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War, one U.S. Air Force cargo plane was ready for the job the C-124 Globemaster II. Though the job of airlifting military cargo may not be the most heroic part of a military campaign, it certainly was for the C-124 Globemaster II and its crew. This aircraft will finally be responsible for airlifting more than 7,000 U.S. troops in and out of an area before the end of the war. Nicknamed Old Shaky, the C-124 was built with a massive 77-foot cargo bay that could be accessed through clamshell doors and hydraulic ramps. The piston engines of the C-124 Globemaster II could push the plane to a cruising speed of just 230 miles per hour. However, when its successor, the C-17 Globemaster III, rose into the skies for the first time in the early 1990s, it did not only bring the much-needed improvement in strategic military airlift volume and range, but the speed discrepancy was mind-blowing. This 174-foot behemoth, powered by four Pratt & Whitney F-117 PW100 turbofan engines, could reach Mach 0.77 speeds, which is above 500 miles per hour. more than twice the speed of its predecessor, the Globemaster II. The builder of this cargo lifting marvel made sure to throw in many speed controls, some of which have given the C-17 an outstanding uniqueness. Take the reverse thrust, for instance. The C-17 engines are equipped with a unique directed flow thrust reverser, which is capable of being deployed even in flight to create the massive amount of drag required for maximum rate swift descents. After touchdown, the airplane's thrust reversers assist in reducing the speed, making for extremely short rolling distances. Executing this rare backward movement usually produces a visible vortex at the engine's intake. The vortex appears as the thrust reversers forcefully engage the engines to rev up the force needed to move this massive aircraft in this unusual backward direction. As a strategic military transport aircraft, the C-17 Globemaster III was built with the intention of bringing its cargo as close to the troops on the ground as possible even when it means landing on dirt strips and makeshift runways. <laughs> During such risky landings, 
The thrust reversers of all four engines direct the engine exhaust upwards and forward, preventing the ingestion of runway debris and any risk of foreign object damage. The C-17 truly occupies a special place in the strategic airlift program of the entire U.S. Air Force. Of the 279 C-17s built for the entire military, 223 went directly to the Air Force. Multiple C-17s are sometimes deployed for far-flung covert missions involving night operations. Clear for engine start, we're to that point. The checklist got good fuel, hydraulics, air, and electric. A good example is a record-breaking mission on March 26, 2003 when a total of 15 C-17s carried out a nighttime airdrop of 1,000 paratroopers from the 173rd Airborne Brigade over Bashur in northern Iraq. Another notable four-engine turboprop military airlifter that is no stranger to such intense military campaigns is the C-130 Hercules. Though comparatively smaller in size than the C-17, this plane remains one of the most versatile transport planes in history with more than 40 variants built. After its first flight in 1954, the C-130 quickly became the main tactical airlifter for many military forces worldwide, assisting in troop and cargo transport, search and rescue operations, weather reconnaissance, and delivering humanitarian aid. Some variants have been converted into aerial refueling tankers and aerial firefighting machines. Beyond these peacetime operations, some variants of the C-130 were specifically built for aggressive roles. All right, crew, clear for takeoff. Okay, we are clear. The AC-130U variant, aptly called Spooky Gunship, carries an arsenal of side-firing, trainable 25mm, 40mm, and 105mm guns. When the need arises to access remote locations and land on a variety of unconventional surfaces, the C-130 faces the challenge head-on. It is equipped with high flotation landing gears that make it possible to descend, touch down, and safely taxi on dirt strips. No matter how bad the landing surface may be, all the C-130 needs is a 5,000 feet rolling distance and a runway width of at least 80 feet.
During such operations, the C-130 will make use of its powerful thrust reversers. This activates the hydrodynamic system that changes the blade angle of the four propellers, redirecting airflow forward instead of backward. This drastically reduces its rolling speed to enable a quick stop. Though still waxing strong with the U.S. Air Force, the C-130 is being gradually shoved aside in Europe in favor of a European-made four-engine turboprop military transport aircraft. Known as the A-400M Atlas, looking almost like the C-130. The A-400M was specifically created to meet the military strategic airlift needs of the United Kingdom and the seven European nations, including France and Germany. These nations collectively ordered a total of 174 A400Ms, with delivery slated for 2008. However, cost overruns and development program delays retarded the launch until August 2013, when the first Airbus A400M was delivered to the French Air Force. So far, a total of 111 A400M Atlas have been delivered. As of October 2022, the UK alone maintains a fleet of 21 A400M Atlas airlifters. The aircraft can take up to 116 fully equipped paratroopers to a drop zone at speeds in excess of 500 miles per hour, but will slow down to as little as 125 miles per hour during troop exit to ensure minimum dispersion. This low speed ability also makes the A400M ideal for dropping supplies from low altitudes. Aside from the programmed routine checks, every C-130, for instance, goes in for in-depth inspection every 540 calendar days. Members of an aircraft maintenance squadron go to work on the C-130 inside a specialized hangar. The engines are carefully unscrewed and hoisted aside for detailed inspections, while every other system is fine-tuned for maximum performance. In 2015, the U.S. Air Force decided to extend the capabilities of the combat airlift fleet. This time, upgrading the C-130H engines was the course of action. A $4.4 million contract was awarded. Put it on and then take it. Oh, that goes all the way from the edge. 67 maintenance contractors went to work in this repair facility, 17 miles north of Little Rock, Arkansas. Put it on and then take it. Each upgraded engine was then pushed to its extreme limits on a massive outdoor test cell 
mounted for the purpose. I can kick it off. As military airlift aircraft technology continues to advance, there will be a need for facilities like these, where an airlifter or any of its components can go from ground to bits and pieces, to airworthy again in time for the next global airlift assignment. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.